Tonight, a perilous journey to a mountain hideout, a secret meeting orchestrated by a criminal mastermind, the guests of honor, a Latina superstar he admires, and a Hollywood actor. What happened that night? And why is she in such trouble for going? Did she cross a line? Who's the cat? Who's the mouse? Here now, Diane Sawyer. Good evening. So glad you're joining us tonight for what I have to say may be one of the wildest stories I have ever reported. It's the story of that curious trio, the Oscar-winning actor, the Mexican superstar, and the notorious drug lord known as El Chapo. The three of them heading toward an encounter that, as you'll see, is poised sometimes between the laughable and the lethally dangerous. And there is something to keep in mind about drugs coming into America tonight. When an addict reaches for a shot of heroin or methamphetamine, chances are they are saying hello to the man who brought it here, El Chapo, the man who has been called the most powerful drug lord in the history of the world. You are looking into the eyes of a mystery, the drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Very little is known about him. He is rarely seen. For more than 20 years, El Chapo has been saturating America with debilitating, destructive drugs. And as his empire expands, violence follows. His Sinaloa cartel said to have been involved in thousands and thousands of deaths. The man himself, so dangerous and elusive, no prison can hold him. And so the largest manhunt since Osama bin Laden is underway to find him. When surveillance pictures show someone is about to get there first. Not the police, not the army. Wait a minute, is that the American actor Sean Penn? And who is the woman with him? Can it be the supernova of Mexican television? Actress Kate Del Castillo. Her biggest role, Reina del Sur, Queen of the South. She plays Teresa Mendoza, Teresa. a beautiful and rapacious drug lord. And with her trip to see El Chapo, so many questions. Did she lead to his capture? Why did he take the risk? Did she make deals? Did she take his money? Was it professional or something more? We're here in her home in California to find out. We're here. <laughs> Rolling everywhere? Quiet, please. She's been living in the midst of furor and scandal, headlines and accusations, and she says she's finally ready to give her answers on TV. This is the first time that I'm on camera saying the truth. So what is the message you want to send tonight? That I am an honorable woman. My family is honorable. And this does not define who I am. I've affected a lot of people, and I want, and I want to say I'm sorry. When we arrive, her family's there. Her dad, a big Mexican TV star. Your parents were just here. Yes, and I am so, so sorry that I put my entire family through it. Because that was not my, that, that was sorry that was not the the that was not the point. I didn't know that this was going to happen. So what did happen? How on earth did this whole strange explosive saga begin? In a sense, with her, the woman admired in Mexico for being so outspoken and impulsive. It's ready to go. The Spanish word audaz, audacious. She likes motorcycles, race cars. Del Castillo picks up a position. And holding her own with the boys. Tequila. Tequila. She has her own tequila brand called Honor. But one fateful night, she says, she was sitting at her computer and decided to free associate about her philosophy of life. She provocatively takes on the Catholic Church for making women feel guilty about their sexuality. I have deep pain, I have sex, I have dreams, fantasies, desires. She attacks the reigning government of Mexico for corruption while so many people suffer. And then, in one sentence, she lights a fuse that will create an explosion. She says, unlike the government, at least the number one crime boss in the country is not a hypocrite. Today, I believe more in El Chapo Guzman than in the government. She urges the drug lord to turn his power for good. Come on, Don. You would be the hero of heroes. Let's traffic with love. You know how to. Life is a business. The only thing that changes is a merchandise, right? And that last line is one every TV viewer in Mexico would recognize. La vida es un negocio. 
único que cambia es la mercancía. It's what her character says on Queen of the South. Teresa Mendoza. Teresa Mendoza, yes. Yes. And then I said, oh, this looks really nice. I'm going to treat it. And, and, and I, I finished my glass of wine and went to sleep, of course, not knowing what was going to happen. She's now working in Hollywood. It's not easy to get big parts. I need to create my own things because I'm not going to wait for Steven Spielberg to call me, you know, and life goes really fast. And, and of course, I'm in my, on my 40s, so it's, it doesn't get any easier. But I need to start with a big project so I can grab attention from the big people in Hollywood. And one day, she gets a call. There's these people that are calling you for a big Hollywood movie. She calls back and learns the identity of the person answering her prayers. It's the lord of the drug trade, El Chapo Guzman. And they said, no, we are um, Joaquin Guzman Loera's lawyers. And I, I was in shock. I was in shock. But she decides to fly to Mexico to have a secret meeting with his lawyers who know all about her tweet mentioning Chapo's name. What's the first thing they said to you? Um, bienvenida, señorita. <laughs> yeah. After uh, that. <laughs> and they say, well, uh, Señor Guzman wants you to do a movie uh, about him. He wants to give you the rights of his, of his life. And I was, why me? Why me? I mean... And why you? Why? And, and, and they say, well, because um, he is a fan of yours. He loved your character in La Reina del Sur, but he, he loves your family. He knows your family are honorable family. And you tell the truth, you're brave. And I'm like, well, yeah, but we have to know exactly what he wants to say in that movie because, because I'm not saying any, any lies, you know? We all know who he is. I'm not doing a romantic comedy about the guy. She says she's not sure if she'll produce a documentary or a movie that is tough and gritty like the biopic American Gangster. Either you're somebody or you're nobody. Be right back. But she tells the lawyers she'll finance it legitimately. Not a penny from him. Not a penny from him. That's, he, I mean... They, they asked me, and so, do we have to put money? Are, are we charging for the... And I'm like, no, not... No. But I can hear some, someone saying, okay, he's not giving you money, but he's giving you something that will earn money for you. I don't see it like that, Diane. There's a movie of uh, Chapo, there's The Godfathers, there's all these movies um, talking about these drug lords. Right, but your first reaction is not, oh, my gosh. This is a $3 billion criminal enterprise. I am entering into a world in which I don't have bearings, first of all. Mm -hmm. And I could end up making common cause with one of the world's greatest criminals. I know, and I, and I totally understand uh, that. But, but I'm, I'm an actor, and I'm not the first one that has risked a lot of things to go and have a good story. Is there anyone so repellent, so destructive, not going to find out who Hitler really was, not going to find out who Pol Pot really was? As, as an actor and, and a filmmaker, I cannot say no. You know, it's a big opportunity to have, for the first time, someone tell his story uh, being alive, being the biggest drug lord. I'm just an actor that wanted a great story. Yes, selfish, probably but a great story that will help us understand the organized crime. That, that was it. And since he's asked her to meet him, she'll learn more about what he has to say. And it was, for me, it was really secure because he was in jail. <laughs> That's true for the moment. El Chapo is in prison. But as you're about to see, this Houdini will soon make one of his great escapes. He races off to his secret and dangerous mountains and where he goes, she's about to follow. And when we come back, how a famous American actor signed up for the perilous ride. It is 8.52 p.m. on July 11th, 2015. A camera is focused on a maximum security cell in Mexico's most heavily fortified prison. The prisoner is El Chapo. And by the way, his name means shorty. He's about five foot six inches tall. Look closely as he seems to be going into the shower before bed, but wait, did he just disappear? 
incredibly lift up the bottom of his shower and it drops into a tunnel where a motorcycle on rails is waiting so he can drive out fast. We're inside the El Chapo tunnel. ABC's Gio Benitez showed us the stunning engineering. Fortified walls, perfect ventilation, running about a mile to carry El Chapo to freedom, where he can head back to his beloved Sinaloa Mountains. When it's over, seven prison officials will be arrested as complicit. The Mexican people are outraged, but not very surprised. Intense manhunt now underway. Con la fuga del Chapo Guzman. Au revoir, El Chapo. It's laughable. Seven were arrested. Seven. Seven. Come on. Come on. You're sure that tunnel could not have been built with no. more than seven people complicit? <laughs> no. And what a tunnel, right? Just perfect. The night it happens, Kate Del Castillo says she's out with friends in Los Angeles. She gets a text from one of Chapo's lawyers in which the lawyer says he's celebrating the escape. And she says, me more. Were you glad? Were you happy he escaped? I, I don't know. No, not, it's not exactly that I was happy that he escaped. I, I was just stunned. I, I think most Mexicans were. Did you think this would be good for my project? No, I was devastated. In that, I said, oh my God, I, my copyright just vanished. And I talked to the, to the producers and one of them said, no, it just got better. She says she's now found two producers to raise money for the Chapo movie project. They're well known in Hollywood for their work with Oliver Stone. And they tell her they have another well-known Hollywood friend, the actor, Sean Penn. She says she's excited he wants to meet with her and she thinks he's coming to help her on the project. You know, this big Hollywood actor will give me more credibility, you know, about that I w I'm serious with this movie. And when they meet, he has an idea. Take the fugitive El Chapo up on his offer for a meeting, and he, Sean Penn, will go with her. So she asks to meet with El Chapo and bring some of her colleagues. And the answer comes back, yes. And this time, directly from the man himself. Hello, friend. What a pleasure to greet you, even through this medium. Eager to greet you personally, friend. Are you going to be around here? I have faith you will be comfortable. I will care for you more than I do for my own eyes. He sends word she can bring whoever she wants. She responds, I am so moved that you say you will take care of me. No one has ever taken care of me. Thank you. I am free next weekend. That's true. You want him to take care of you? Yeah, I mean, I was being nice because I wanted to get the story you know, access to the story. But it's a little seductive, that line, isn't it? Uh, when your life is in risk, uh, I don't think so. You know, so are you sure that we're gonna be okay? And by being okay means I'm gonna be alive. If she's being pleasant, so is El Chapo, who's known to have a soft spot for beautiful women, his current wife, a beauty queen, 26 years old. And as he awaits Del Castillo, we count 37 text messages to his lawyers as he tries to decide which phone he can send her to correspond that would make her happy. Will you like the color and is it the right color and do they have it in pink? I mean, this is a guy with a case. I, I didn't know about those texts. Again, I don't know how truthful they are, but it definitely... I, I can't... I, I just... <laughs> She says the parts of the text that are leaked are designed to make her look bad. Is he seducing you? Or are you seducing him? Who's the cat? Who's the mouse? Right, right. Well, again, it's out of context. I don't think it was necessarily me, Kate del Castillo. He was probably had a crush on Teresa Mendoza. Had a crush? But Wait a minute. Text. Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think he's an ad ad maybe an admirer. I don't know. I'm, I'm, okay, maybe yes. <laughs> I don't know, we'll have to ask him. But, but whatever is happening, the trip is on. So, was it crazy? Was it naive? Was it a wild escapade? What was it? I think a little bit of everything. It was naive for sure. She says she's moving a little too fast without thinking and has no idea when she picks up the phone El Chapo sent her through his lawyers, the government is already watching. In the meantime, up in the mountains, the mysterious king of the drug trade. 
has embarked on a kind of cartel party planning, perhaps distributing even more of his notorious bribes to people in the area, perhaps sending out hundreds of his men into the woods to create a safe path for her night. He moved a lot of people, a lot of people. So, I mean, the risk was enor enormous. Chapo Guzman was incredibly reckless or was head over heels in love. This is Jorge Castaneda, a Mexican academic and former Secretary of Foreign Affairs, who can't believe what is happening. Did a lot of very foolish things. But for all his amorousness, this is the man who changed addiction around the world, reinventing the drug trade with his planes, his submarines, inventing the snaking tunnels that connect the drugs to nearly every American town. Carl Pike, a former DEA agent. You have a person who uses terror, uses murder, uses corruption, uses unspeakable amounts of violence to build an empire. This is Grainy's cell phone video, reported the El Chapo, with an unhurried swagger, interrogating a man tied to a post with his pants around his legs. In America, there are seven indictments of El Chapo, some of them citing murder. Chicago has named him public enemy number one, like Al Capone. Murder, torture, that either directly or under his mm -hmm. umbrella, under his I direction. That, You're not disputing it. No, not at all. Oh my God, no, not at all. So what will she do about this in her film? It is going to glamorize him. He's not going to admit to murders. Well, I don't know. They say that he wants to retire soon. Um, I so I think I think he's just tired, and I think he, you know, these people uh, have egos. But even as thousands of Mexican troops and DEA agents are searching for El Chapo, Kate Del Castillo posts a picture on Instagram with the hashtag "Nothing is what it seems." Taking a bottle of her new tequila, she heads to the airport and says she's both excited and very, very scared. Coming up next, the dangerous trip to the mountain, and for the first time, the drug lord sees his favorite star. Look again at those surveillance photos leaked by the Mexican government, hinting that two actors are so ambitious they would sneak in for a meeting with the dangerous fugitive, the world's biggest drug lord. So did this woman who lives in front of cameras know she was being photographed? Didn't you know you were under surveillance? No, to be honest, Diane, I didn't think about it. I, I thought he knew what he was doing by you know, texting me. If I knew I was being followed, I would have never gone down there because it's a lot of risk. Not only my life, but everybody's life. You thought you were going to get in and out and no one would know? Yes. And something curious. Here's another surveillance photo. The government says it's the tiny plane El Chapo sent to carry them to the mountain. Did this plane manage to evade government radar? We live in an era of drones and everything, but it's not like there's a constant beep where he is. They pop up and then they disappear and then they pop up someplace else. It was flying very low to the ground and bouncing so hard, Del Castillo says she takes a swig of his gift tequila to calm her nerves. And even though she's thinking El Chapo will be impressed, she's bringing the major player from Hollywood, Sean Penn. We now know from text, the drug lord has no idea who Sean Penn is and asked to Google him. Next, the group gets into a car for the long drive up the mountain. And since Penn doesn't speak Spanish, she frantically tries to signal him that the driver of the car is El Chapo's son. Sean was like, well, translate me when it's important. And I'm like, this is important. He's the son. On the drive, they pass through sophisticated layers of security. Ordinary looking people keep suddenly appearing out of the woods will come out with new cell phones or radios or something, you know. Finally, about 10 or 11 o'clock, she says, they arrive at a clearing on the mountain so dark, she doesn't see who is opening her door. And he said, amiga. And that's how I knew it was him, because he called me amiga. And, you know, and I was like, oh my god, I couldn't believe that we were there. I was just, I didn't know how to react. Did he embrace you? Did he kiss you? What did he do? He kissed me on the cheek and embraced me. We all do that in Mexico. We, we, that's the way we say hello. 
So where were they meeting? Multiple reports have identified this place just outside the town of Kosala, at the Nuestra Senora Nature Reserve, nestled high on the Sierra Madre Mountains. But we want you to know the reserve itself denies that they were the location. We do know when Del Castillo moved into light, she looked at the man rarely seen by the outside world. He's actually taller than I thought because they call him Chapo before Shorty. And his, his eyes uh, just, just penetrate you like a, like a dagger. It, they, they're just like mesmerizing in that way, in, in a way that you cannot just turn around. Uh, but, it, but, but it's scary. You know, it's scary and uh, because it's really strong. They head into a clearing. We don't know if it's this one, but they're at a wooden table under lights. And security? We've seen pictures of El Chapo's armed soldiers in the past. But Del Castillo says she now knows that the armed soldiers were hiding out in the woods. And Chapo made sure in her eye line there were just a few people, relaxed, no weapons. A table of food arriving almost out of nowhere. Local Rice. family, maybe, or something like that. Carne asada, tacos, um, uh, um, langostinos, a bunch of things. I just saw that it was a big, big, um, I just couldn't eat. But I knew I had to. And because I didn't want to be rude, I think I did one taco. I don't even remember. Tacos are my thing, so I went for the taco. <laughs> yeah. Seven hours. What did you talk about? She says he talks about his family protection of his sons, his mother. He talked about his mom. He wanted me to meet her. And she says as he talks, she's thinking 25 years ago when he became head of the cartel, his eyes seemed almost challenging. But now, she says, his face appears more like a man who wants to give up running. I sense that, uh, that he was probably tired. But he confirms he is sending an ocean of drugs to the United States and around the world. And he is the biggest. Did he say, I supply more heroin, methamphetamine, cocaine, and marijuana than anybody else in the world? Yes. Yeah. But he still loves his kids, and he still loves his mom. So there's something, uh, there's love inside there somewhere. We asked, did he talk about his tentacles into the Mexican government, all those bribes, the corruption? financing political campaigns, paying for his own protection? No, no, he didn't. He said about politics, the politicians go do their job, I do mine, and that's it. And she notices as he talks, the crime boss displays almost suburban manners. He doesn't even say a bad word. He, and nobody around him smokes or do dr drugs. And it was like, oh, Sean is the only one who smokes here. <laughs> Which brings us again to Sean Penn, who doesn't speak Spanish, depends on her to translate. She says at this dinner, Penn threw her a very sharp and very dangerous curve. She says she simply didn't know that the only reason Penn was coming on the trip was to get an interview of his own for Rolling Stone. She says when he asks her to translate that that's his plan, she's afraid to look alarmed or surprised because Chapo and his sons could turn on the American actor. What was the expression on your face when you heard it? I was just like, okay, this is new for me, but I'm thinking, I'm scrambling inside of me like, okay, okay, okay. I wanted to grab Sean and put him aside and ask him, excuse me, why didn't you tell me this? It's like, there was no way I was gonna do that. You should know that Sean Penn has a very different story about this moment. He says she knew about the article and was quote, Nothing but excited, couldn't wait for it to come out. At some point during their evening on the mountain, Penn wants to make sure he gets a picture with El Chapo by himself. Do you have a picture? Yes. Can we see it? Sure. This is her picture, the drug lord in blue shoes and the blue designer shirt. By the way, the shirt is now selling out in stores. She says afterwards, they returned to the table once again, still drinking tequila. We did finish the bottle, yeah. We all had a little bit of honor. Well, did you all get pretty drunk? Well, his, his, his son almost finished the bottle. I was like, hey, uh, it's for your dad. As the party rolls on into early morning, the drug lord apparently takes a look at his TV dream girl and notices that this is a woman who may have had one tequila too many. Because he said, I think you have to go to bed. 
I think the tequila, I was tipsy and I was like, I said, yes, I think it's time. Tipsy, like dizzy like, tipsy? Yeah, like a, a little bit, you know, well, you know, the tequila just got to you. That was not drunk, but I was not in my entire five senses. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. And he said, I'm coming, I'm, I'm showing you your room. Chapo leads her down a dark path. We don't know for sure. It could be one like this in the reserve. Where I was gonna spend the night. And it was the only time that we were alone. That was really scary. And coming up next, we'll tell you what he does when they get to the bedroom door. My heart started uh, pounding. Stay with us. Let's pick up again where we left off. The actress, who's had a little too much tequila, panicking as a drug lord takes her out into the dark. We think this is the path they walked toward a bungalow that has a bedroom. When we turned around and we were alone, out of anybody's sight, I was waiting for him to make a move or just grab me probably in a different way. You know, man, I had no idea what intentions. You know, in my head, it was every, it could, everything happened in my head. And my partners couldn't do anything. What would you have done if he'd made a move? Oh my God, I, I... You must have thought about it. I don't know. Those, those seconds were crucial for me. I thought everything, of course I did think about it. I, I, don't, I don't know, Diane, I don't know. Woozy, terrified, she says he did something startling. He simply tried to steady her on her feet. I knew he, he was not gonna try to make a move or something that would harm me. What do you mean? How, how did you know? Be just be the way he very gently t put the, his hand on my elbow. And she says in that moment, sort of like in the movies, somebody a little wobbly tried to say something a little brave. Um, I actually got the guts to tell him, I said, this is now or never, and if I don't say it right now, I might not have another opportunity. And if I say it, uh, that, this might be my last words. So I, I asked him, I said, um, amigo, while we were walking, um, amigo, just don't forget what I said on my tweet originally. You're a powerful man. You can do something good. Including, she maintains, telling him she wanted a way to acknowledge victims of organized crime. I was literally dying in, inside. And I thought if he gets mad, if he, I, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But I didn't took my, my eyes out of him, you know? And, and he didn't took his eyes out of mine. And he said, that's good, amiga, you have a great heart. Do it. And he said, I'm not staying here. You won't see me tomorrow. I never stay where my guests are for their security um, and mine as well. So uh, you won't see me again. Thank you so much for giving me one of the best days. Thank you. With that, the dangerous drug lord vanishes. And then when we said goodbye, he, he hugged me and he gave me a kiss. She says she pretty much staggered into a room where all four of the guests had beds. This is one of the rooms at the Ecological Reserve. We don't know if it was like hers. I, I fell asleep and I was like, oh, what should I take off? Nothing. What if we have to run or what if we, and of course, because, you know, I'm the only woman there. I think probably one hour later, the lawyer came in and said, come on, up, 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 up. And then, like one of the heroines in her telenovela, she takes the wheel, trying to outrace the storm clouds and the threat of being discovered. She says they ask her to drive them down the mountain past all intruding eyes. Because mostly when they see women driving, they don't stop them. And I said, of course, yes. When they're back in Los Angeles, Sean Penn has another idea. Get El Chapo to send answers to his questions on videotape for his magazine article. She says she still wants Penn to help support her movie project and rationalizes that maybe getting something on tape from Chapo is a good backup plan. Because we don't know if uh, the guy can be killed the next day. So maybe we can base the movie on this article. Before long, she's told about the package that's arrived, a cell phone in it. Which I have, this is the original cell phone, he said. The video in This was the actual one that he was take with. Es exclusivo para la señorita Kay del Castillo. 
His first words, this is for Kate Del Castillo. As the tape rolls for 17 minutes, you see the master drug lord, the man they call the king of the mountains, stumbling, trying to figure out what looks good on TV. Should he do it without a hat? No, the hat goes back on. He shaved his mustache. The whole thing a strange tableau. When he talks, the roosters crow. His answers are halting as he says drug dealing is necessary for economic survival in Mexico. She says she's just stunned that he sent this tape because she asked. I was being pressured by Sean to get the video. Um, so when I saw it, I was moved. I was really moved. You're moved by his... I, I was moved by him doing this for me, sending it to me and all the risk that, you know, it's just crazy. We've never seen a video of him. And later, she will learn that just days after she and Penn left the mountain, the government moved in on Chapo with helicopter gunships and Marines on the ground. She says she heard of one report that there was an exchange of fire in villages nearby. Innocent people were killed or wounded. And the woman who has written about her country suffering so much from violence says she thinks about this moment because she worries this one's on her. There were many things that happened after we left, and for that I will always, always be sorry. Because of the lives lost? Because yeah. Yeah, of course. There's so many innocent uh, people that is dying, you know? And, uh, and just to think that because of me being there led to something like that, that's something that I'm going to have to live with. Coming up next, is she worried El Chapo thinks she put him in jail? And is the Mexican government threatening to put her in jail too? Why? January 8, 2016. Before dawn, troops move in on a house in a coastal city and El Chapo is there. A barrage of bullets. But amazingly, he escapes behind mirrors, which hide one of his secret tunnels. The tunnel leads him out through the Mexican sewers. Here, you can see in a grainy video how he pops out of a manhole half a mile away. And then he tries to get out of town in a stolen getaway car but the vehicle breaks down and they nab him. No longer the guy wearing that silk shirt on the mountain. The man captured has a filthy t-shirt. What do you see? I see he tried to run for sure. There's a famous perp walk. Officers push his head down, then turn it so the world has proof they got their man. In his safe house, they found his arsenal and his personal DVD set of her show, Queen of the South. But she thinks it's just too convenient. I don't trust the judicial system in Mexico. It's something that they want us to see. And from the first moment, Kate del Castillo, Kate del Castillo, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, and más problemas. The Mexican government said the ability to track her trip was essential to the capture of El Chapo. Though yesterday they told us it was just a contributing element. So are they trying to get her in trouble with the drug lord? But do members of the cartel think you led to the capture of their leader? I don't think so. I'm not a law enforcement agent or I don't work in the government. So, I, you know, so I cannot, you know, betray someone like that. Plus, it would be stupid. I mean, it's my life in risk and my family. She reminds us the capture was three months after her meeting on the mountain and in a different place. So why would the government do it? To endanger your life? Maybe not to endanger my life, but they want to put me as an example because they're very angry at me. They want to take you down. I think so. I'm just like a toy for them. Everybody knows it's a witch hunt. The Mexican government can leak whatever it wants to whoever it wants. They're more interested in smearing her. And the Mexican attorney general has openly insinuated that Del Castillo may have come close to money laundering. Someone leaked an exchange of text with El Chapo's lawyer about her tequila project. And he's like, maybe, you know, Mr. Guzman can invest in it. And I'm like, yeah, sure, that would be great. Whatever. For me, it was like, 
I'm just, you know, I didn't think about it. Of course, I wouldn't receive one cent. I have not received one cent from the guy, not one cent. I mean, I was just, yeah, whatever. That was it. Yeah, stupid. Yes, I regret that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I've done a lot of uh, mistakes in my life, you know, and, and that was one of it. Mr. Penn. And she says another one of her mistakes was being naive about Tron Penn's Rolling Stone article. It appeared the day after El Chapo's capture. She says it contained an inflammatory passage that simply wasn't true. Penn writes, on their trip up the mountain to see El Chapo, they were stopped at a military checkpoint. But soldiers see the son of El Chapo and wave them through. It's not true. We never stopped, uh, we were never stopped by a military checkpoint or by any other person or checkpoint. Never. Why is the checkpoint so important? Well, it's humiliating for the Mexican government, for the Marines, for the military. It's such a big issue and we can get in so much trouble, which I am, by the way. We reached out to Sean Penn who says the checkpoint incident did happen and he stands by his story. But as of tonight, Del Castillo says it still stings that Penn has been calling himself a journalist, while in the article, she is called Our Ticket to El Chapo. Our Ticket to El Chapo's Trust. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> he got it right in that way, you know, because he wouldn't be there if it was not for me. Aren't you angry at him? Yes, a little bit. I am. But again, I'm, I, I'm angry at myself because I believe in people and I didn't know Sean Penn. She was so sure, she says, he would help her on her big project in Hollywood. I, I think he was never interested in the movie. Penn answers her tonight. I like Kate. She's energetic, sweet, and has heart. But he says, at no point did I express an interest in producing, directing, or acting in her film. When we come back, what about that film? Is Kate Del Castillo still in touch with the drug lord in prison? Stay with us. Tonight, Kate Del Castillo is still a powerful actress. Netflix plans to shoot a new series with her, and she has more than 2 million followers online. And not long ago, by the way, she became an American citizen, saying she loves both her countries, both her homes. The interview about to end, we noticed something. You looked sad. I look sad? <laughs> she told us she doesn't dare go to Mexico. She's afraid she'll be arrested and says again she never intended to hurt anyone. I need to finish with my legal problems so I can move forward and I can start uh, having a life again. Tonight, that drug kingpin, El Chapo, is sitting in the same Mexican prison where he escaped last year. There are all these reports that he's in isolation, that he has dogs outside the door, that he has blood pressure problems. Do you feel sorry for him? No, I don't. I don't feel sorry for him. I think he's a big guy. I think he knows what he's doing, and I think he knows what his choosing this life is like. As he said on that videotape, even 